let me just start to talk about you know this this Agris network. So Agris, Agris network is um, is a collaborative network of organizations uh, which makes you know the Agris exist by sharing the bibliographic records um, in this you know in this big you know sphere. And uh, basically, the network is um, the community behind the Agris database. Um, and um, there are actually two key points or two key elements that I should be underlying while speaking about the Agris network, which they have already, already actually touched in the first hour. And I was saying that um, Agris network, uh, sorry, the um, this, you know, uh, collaborative you know network of organizations uh, is the community actually uh, behind the agris database and these uh, organizations they are actually uh, just you know sharing their bibliographic records uh, of the scholarly uh, outputs or any other actual research outputs that they produce and they actually make agris exist in the end and i was trying to and I was trying to underline this, these two, two key elements, you know, in the, in the network when we are talking about it. And the one of them is the multilingualism and the other one is the equitable representation of different communities, different languages uh, from all over the world, but especially from the global south. This is particularly important for Agris because we really believe that this brings the diversity in terms of um, this, this this landscape that we actually create with with Agris, and um, I will touch upon uh, you know these things a bit later in a bit more detail, but um, we you know we kept saying that you know not everything has been um, sorry has been produced in the agricultural sciences, especially in the peer literature or in the journal articles, but we really try to go beyond that. And, and we also try to go beyond English dominant, you know, uh, scholarly communications. Um, okay, so I just you know, wanted to reinforce here that Argus network itself is a key, key element to ensure that Argus is a database contain and, um, you know, continue to provide a diverse uh, content from relevant uh, stakeholders from different uh, stakeholders in the community. Perhaps uh, one last thing to say here is that, like Imma said, Argus is, has a long history. It has been around, you know, for about 48 years. That is quite a long time. So uh, since it started, it really evolved. It changed a lot. Uh, there has been many revisions. And uh, in the last uh, few years, what we are trying to do is also revisit this, this concept, revisit the, con, uh, the ARCRIS network, and we are trying to reconnect with the data providers itself. Um, obviously, when we are talking about uh, ARCRIS network, there is also the users. We always put the users you know, uh, separately here, but um, Obviously, our Agris users are as important as the network. And what it happens is that um, so our data provider organizations are channeling the communication with these local communities and local needs and uh, local um, users uh, between the FAO's Agris team and themselves uh, and, and the users so that actually we can um, feed Agris services and improvements and all the decisions makes make um, based on the on their on their needs um, so that 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 for you know their feedback is is very very important to us and all these continuous improvements are also thanks to the users obviously um, i'm just checking whether any other points that i wanted to make it this on this slide right we yeah we work with with the organizations but also as well as you know the users just to say let me just move to these you know why questions um if you ask you know and um, that there were actually a few questions about why to become a part of uh, agris and uh, the benefits or overall the main benefits are uh, agris is agris itself and the agris network joining the network is a free thing and by contributing to agris uh, with their bibliographic records, with their research outputs to organizations 
benefiting from being part of a dynamic international network with a focus on the agricultural content, which is very much accessible, intensively used. We saw this on the Google Analytics so far, and it's massively distributed, and we've seen that on the maps in the global information landscape. And they are all um, in, the, in the network, our partners, I also say, these organizations are jointly contributing to the international science. They're exchanging information, data sets between different countries, regions, stakeholders, and this also makes this obviously increasing the visibility to the broader international um, audience in the scholarly landscape. They are sharing the uh, sharing unique materials. Uh, we already mentioned the gray literature and also um, all the you know, the research outputs, you know, beyond uh, this peer peer reviewed literature. And also there are um, unpublished scientific technical reports, governmental publications, conference materials, data sets, and so on. So they are able to share these things to uh, this network. Here I'm talking about more specific benefits to the organizations, but also the collections of their um, of these organizations. Agris increases the visibility uh, of these uh, partner organizations in the network at the global level. I will try to be specific and what it means when we say this when we talk about this visibility in my later slides. On the, on the second level, it also increases the usage of the institutional research outputs because not only visibility at the organizational profiles in the network, but we also give spotlight, we do spotlight the um, institutional collections. Agrisense infrastructure, the technical ability and the capability in the, at the back end, it enables all the discoverability on the web. We talked about the Google Analytics, but in the same way in, in the all actually search engines um, with the, with the infrastructure actually functionalities in Agris really you know, increases this, this discoverability, level of discoverability. It offers multilinguality. I will go into a bit more detail in that, in that but AgroWalk, the multinational multilingual thesaurus in food and agriculture, we are using that at the back end to create that multilinguality. Um, and Agris itself is, is creates just a knowledge sharing network. Uh, between among the members and also um, and also between the FAO and, and the network itself. Um, it also creates great opportunities for further collaborations. Uh, again, not only between FAO and these partners, but also we also have, we also know great example of these collaborations between the institutions within the network. Um, we, we, we briefly talked about this, but when, when you go back to the earlier years in the Agris network, uh, look at this map, you know, from the 1978, we were looking at this uh, several weeks ago and uh, thinking about how we expanded since then and how actually Agris evolved since then. Because when you look at this um, map, the first thing is that you see all these new green areas, it's well spread by then even, but the main difference was by then there was only one organization connected to Agris in per country. But when you look at the same picture today, as Emma showed this before, she used this, this slide before, there are actually now 447 data providers from many different countries, and there are many in one country. You can also see like yeah, we already mentioned there are more than 20 data providers in the brown areas. There are between 10 and 20 uh, data providers in the green areas. Uh, this goes on and on and on. We also have some pending applications. I will also touch upon that a little bit later with some reasoning while they, while they are actually uh, waiting. I wanted to just reinforce this, this user statistics, especially you know, when it comes to why questions. We receive, Argus receive quite high uh, user statistics. And this is like uh, from the, the, the current numbers are about 10 million page views the yearly. And uh, in this graphic, you see the comparison between the two quarters of the years from 2020 and 2021. And what it shows to you is that 
oh, there's, you know, 22% increase in the users. There are new users, you know, coming and visiting. Our is 23%. There are 14% more sessions have been opened. Maybe this could also be a um, slight answer to the questions whether pandemic and all this you know, online environments that we have to work from uh, also forced us to do to use more actually online resources. This could also be the reason, but there is a there is a great increase. When it comes to benefits, uh, our active members. Um, uh, really benefits from this high use. All of our data providers and members, either active or non-active, they are actually benefiting from this high use. But uh, obviously, our active members make more of uh, these usage in their um, own local environment. So I will try and give a little bit uh, information about that. Another beauty um, about these statistics, each of our data providers have access to their institutional statistics and um, they can assess the impact and the usage and they can you know they, they can actually make uh, decisions informed decisions ba based on these uh, statistics if they want to some of them they do we know that they can also report at their organizations whether um, this partnership with, with agris network and fao makes any you know positive impact or negative impact or what to improve in the long run. So this just gives you um, more uh, data to play with in terms of uh, the partnership with the Argus network, in the Argus network. Right. Um, so we said that Argus evolved a lot um, because you know it has a long history. And the Argus network, uh, since we started, you know, it just um, went through um, quite a lot of you know, changes. And uh, there has been some kind of renovation, renovation uh, we should also say. But Agris Network is what, what I, as I already actually described, this is the community of the organizations, but not individuals. Organizations, uh, they collect and contribute their uh, research outputs about food and agricultural literature, but also they participate in the knowledge sharing activities. Um, so currently these two, a uh, big uh, chunk of responsibilities uh, only contributing with, uh, you know, by sharing the bibliographic records and also participating in the knowledge sharing activities, they, they create you know, different, um, different set of responsibilities or the task, if you like, in the network. That, that's why we have two elements. We have everybody or all the organizations are data providers, but we also have uh, different um, concepts or a separate concept as country hubs, which is something new, but I will explain why, why we say new in a way. Um, let's look at the data providers in a bit more detail. So we said uh, these are the organizations and they are contributing with the metadata or bibliographic records in, an, in, in another uh, term uh, to the content of the Agris, to the Agris database. And these data providers could be research centers, they could be academic institutions. There was a question from one of our um, participants today whether academic institutions can be part of it or not. They're happy to have universities and academic institutions in the network. There are many, many publishers, uh, governmental bodies. We have uh, development uh, research programs international and national organizations within the network. You can actually go and check these things yourself and I will uh, try to make a point how to do this um, on the ACRIS portal. And country hubs. So let's look at them a bit in a bit more uh, focused and detailed way. Again, uh, our country hubs are also data providers, but they also act as a focal point for Agris at country and regional level. Usually it happens at the country level, but we also have some uh, fantastic, um, very active um, country hubs. They also work in, the, in their regions, you know, collaborating with others uh, from different countries. Um, they are also known, these country hubs, known as national Agris centers. This is, this may be quite important when we say you know, national agri centers they actually existed you know uh, since we started from 1974 again this this role and these responsibilities really evolved over time and uh, 
some of them even you know disappeared and some of them actually took more and different roles in where they are operates and some of them are great we are very much appreciating that and they are just contributing to the Argus um, database itself but the country hubs are now responsible these you know um, additional roles that they take they promote Argus in uh, in their countries they guide eligible partners existing and the potential ones in joining um, Argus network and uh, sorry, yeah, in joining Argus network and also in uh, submitting information um, about to, of the resources. Again, we say description of the resources and the metadata. They also coordinate capacity development activities. Again, they may not always you know, do these capacity developments themselves. Sometimes they do collaborate with us. Sometimes they do collaborate with other countries or with other um, stakeholders within their countries, but uh, we are happily working with them very closely uh, around these activities. So I will try to give you a couple of examples from that. For instance, here, um, there are country hubs, very fantastic, you know, uh, active country hubs. They are um, organizing local events, webinars to facilitate this knowledge sharing. As I said, we, sometimes we are being part of them, part of them. We are trying to support the information that they can disseminate to their users or to, to local communities. And some of the recent examples, especially in the last, um, last um, quarter, uh, of 2020 and also in this year, for instance, State Agrarian University of Moldova organized a roundtable, that was a high level roundtable um, to encourage researchers and institutions in Moldova to use Agris not only as an information resource, but also about um, how they can actually become Agris data providers. Another great example was from um, Georgia, um, our data provider institute tech taking for me of Georgian Technical University. They gathered institutions, organizations from different countries, including Albania, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro, Serbia, the Republic of North Macedonia, Ukraine, Armenia, and Moldova for a two-day Arcus and Arc workshop. And um, so we are so happy to see these knowledge sharing activities um, across the network, and we are happy to be part of it. We are happy to promote these things ourselves in the Agris network. Um, so these are just two examples, but there are more about them. So on the Agris um, portal, you might also, uh, you know, explore more of those things, and we are happy to share that on our um, newsletters, etc. I will also point that out how to see these news yourselves. Right. Let's move. Um, from those knowledge sharing activities, we said, uh, we also, you know, now we say Argus Network is also undertaking activities about capacity development. This is quite important because, especially in terms of sustaining this, this successful, you know, activities and the, or whatever success or whatever lessons that we learned within the network, these capacity development activities takes place so that we can either create awareness or we can actually um, we can actually um, gain sorry we can actually build competences you know in, in other people in other organizations so that they can you know learn from these experiences and from these lessons and they can do more with them so that's why um, these activities take place regularly in the network uh, hopefully one day they will also be in person uh, but the, at the moment it's mainly virtually this is to strengthen this collaboration among the members, create new opportunities to work together and to learn from each other. So for uh, knowledge sharing and build competencies, as I said. Um, so these, these channels you know, are, are used for capacity development um, changes and it's quite you know, uh, diverse. We use the annual meetings like today uh, to tell you what we are doing and uh, how you can benefit from the network and from the database and how we, how we can work together. We can also use, or we do use webinar sessions. We have community calls. We do work and create guidelines and publications for uh, our network members, sometimes even together with them because they are great help, especially translating these publications and guidelines in their own languages. And that is, that is really crucial to um, work beyond our, um, you know, well-known or dominant, you know, languages. And 
just one last, you know, something to enforce. So this this knowledge sharing in the Argus network, exchange of experience and learning from each other within the network are the key element uh, for our community. And we do um, our best to keep and support that uh, process and activities. This is a little bit, a little news and um, actually big news, but uh, hopefully it will also materialize, you know, towards the end of the year, but we wanted to share this uh, news with you. FAO has a, has a great experience in, um, long experience in uh, online training programs, and we thought um, we should really move some of these training activities into these, you know, online um, mini programs. And um, this is basically to increase and strengthen the knowledge sharing among the network organizations. That'll be a, just a new layer of this in you know, a capacity uh, development program. It, this is to be released in um, last quarter of the year, probably around you know, November, December. And these um, mini online training programs will be self-paced, focused um, topics and these topics will include um, how to use Argus effectively, how to enhance the metadata quality and how to use uh, vocabularies like Agrawoc in your digital collections. And um, hopefully we will be piloting this at the end of this year and when we are piloting before and after and during the, uh, this pilot we are just um, looking forward to get your feedback to improve that and um, release it fully in the next year. Right, we do also in the network uh, a lot of outreach and communication um, activities. And uh, if you look at the portal, you may wonder uh, about these different terminologies. When I say Agris portal, I'm talking about the Agris, uh, sorry, fao.org slash Agris. That is the place that you can actually find everything about Agris, Agris network and Agris database. You can see the news, um, or um, Agris network in your Arduino guidance. But this portal offers an environment for the network members to share their news, like I showed before to you from Moldova and uh, Georgia examples, and their events with the wider community. Uh, they can also access guides and help pages to become a data provider and how to contribute. They can also follow the latest uh, activities of Agris. Let's look at them a bit more closely. Uh, on the Agris portal, you can see the latest needs. For instance, I, I don't know whether you can actually see my uh, mouse going over them, but uh, there is also a sign up uh, icon just to sign up for the, for the newsletter to stay up to date. There are latest activities, there are latest news, and there's also a video playlist that you may be interested to see, you know, what has been recorded or what webinar was available on that playlist. And additionally, under the activity tab, you should also be able to see all the publications, all the uh, meetings and the webinars, uh, like we pointed out, you know, with the arrows here. So if you have any, again, within the Agris, for Agris database to create awareness for your users or any collaboration within the network, um, if you have any news item like this, we would be um, we would be so happy actually to publish them on the on the Agris portal. So please get in touch with them with, with us if you haven't done uh, that yet. I briefly mentioned that, but uh, this and guides and publications, but our ourselves um, we do create you know for our organizations guides and publications, and we work very closely with these active uh, country hubs. Um, to translate these uh, uh, publications. For instance, I have here a user guide example translated into um, Armenian and, um, and Georgian. So this is actually great, great uh, things to, especially when you are communi communicating uh, with your local communities. Right. I think this is my um, last slide. But um, what I want to say here, so up to, up to here, what I try to describe to you, uh, what Argus Network is, what are the different layers? It's not really different la rails, but layers, but actually different roles. If you want to do more than just contributing the uh, research outputs and the bibliographic records in the Argus database, but if you want to become a focal point, do more knowledge sharing activities or capacity development programs and work with us for more, uh, we're happy to actually um, 
hear from you. On the other hand, we are trying to um, channel all the needs uh, with you, especially through the, this, this Agris Day Group mailing list to stay up to date. Please just join us if you're not already on this list. Our all data providers actually um, is part of this list. But beyond that, anybody is interested in what is happening in the Agris network or about the Agris database, any of the improvements either at the technical side or the user interface, et cetera. So we are actually sharing these needs on the Agris uh, D group state. Right here, I will just invite, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, no, actually, I'm just going ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Just one last uh, couple of things that I would like to uh, share and um, underline. We have great new testimonials from uh, our um, data providers, active data providers. For instance, here, what you see, uh, a quote from Serbia, our fantastic colleague uh, Marina De Jajic from Matika Sirska Library, Serbia. Let me just read that for you first. Um, she said, in Serbia, we primarily use Agris to share and spread scientific agricultural information from our country, both in full text and metadata. I think this is a, sorry. I think this is a great quote in terms of underlying the, um, especially just you know having all both metadata and the, and the full text itself, you know, in this in this agris and the importance of that. And secondly, in the here is another you know great uh, quote from Belarus. Our colleague Veronika Babarka Amerkanka. I'm really sorry for my poor pronunciation. She is from Belarus Agricultural Library, and we have a great collaboration with them. And she said, Agris is a service that allows the import of global information in agricultural and food sciences for Belarusian science scientists, specialists, and practicals. At the same time, Agris is a service that allows the export of Belarusian scientific knowledge in the fields of agriculture, forestry, food, and natural resources into the global information space. This is particularly important for us because this is also where it where where the agris becomes a hybrid you know service we usually talk about agris as a service provider but in case of for instance Belarus agricultural library agris is also um, is also acting as a data provider because they are exposing their research outputs directly in the agris and we are happy to provide them actually this infrastructure. That's why it is quite important. So now I will invite um, Emma to take over from me to introduce our panelists and our guest speakers here. Right. Um, so thank you so much, um, Vilka. You might need to pin me. Uh, otherwise, sure. people will not see me. I will. I will just do that. Um, Please go ahead. So, I would like to welcome um, Rusvelia Gomez. If she's the director of the National Center for Agricultural Information and Documentation, Sanida, of the National Agrarian University of Nicaragua, and also Biorica Lupu, who is the deputy director at the Republic Scientific Agricultural Library of the State Agrarian, Agrarian University of Moldova. To both of them, um, um, yes, we'll come. Um, so if I have the chance to bring them to the screen. Um, I will just stop my you. share screen. I'm sorry. Right. Um, so, yep, I see already. Uh, I'm just Ruth doing it. And Hola, buenos I'm dias. Just... Buenos días a todos. So, este, quiero agradecer Rus, a FAO por, Rus, este, Rus, por estar este, organizando este evento, un evento muy importante este, para el sector agrícola de nuestros países y especialmente a Ima, ¿verdad? Por haberme invitado en este espacio. Y de este espacio yo quiero aprovechar para compartirle qué estamos haciendo en Centroamérica y cómo esto puede ser una oportunidad para participar en Agres. Y pues este sistema. Este, estaba recordando cuando hablaba yo que este, los registros se enviaban en, 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 en los formatos antes, ¿verdad? Y también se enviaban en, en CD. 
Sí, la realidad de las cosas es que el CENIDA ha sido miembro de AGRI desde hace muchos años, ¿verdad? Pero ciertamente, pues este sistema ha cambiado muchísimo, ha revolucionado mucho, y pues yo quisiera compartirles que esta conferencia nos plantea muchos retos. Y nos plantea muchos retos especialmente a los países de Latinoamérica y Centroamérica. Esto porque en este sentido Nicaragua ha venido desarrollando un trabajo este, colaborativo con la red nicaragüense de información y documentación agraria de Nicaragua. Pero también estamos participando de otro espacio tan importante a nivel de Centroamérica como es este, el sistema de información documental centroamericano. Y producto de este, de este sistema, este, pues hemos garantizado un repositorio centroamericano que para nosotros lo consideramos un tesoro. Un tesoro porque están participando ahorita 18 universidades públicas de Centroamérica y que realmente este, ha sido todo un esfuerzo. De igual manera, también nosotros tenemos muchos años y somos este, miembros este, de la Alianza CIDAL que es coordinada por el IICA de, de Costa Rica, y son estos espacios donde realmente este Centroamérica está visible. Y pues lo planteo porque, porque este, como miembros de, este, de estos espacios a nivel nacional y regional, este, nos ha permitido desarrollar productos muy concretos que podemos compartirlo con, esta, con este sistema. Y lo otro muy importante es que estos productos este, han sido concebidos con una visión de compartir la información y verdaderamente hacer una gestión del conocimiento. Hoy en día, como les decía, contamos con un repositorio centroamericano. Y lo otro es este, que también trabajar en red significa mucho compromiso y constancia. Esto es lo que ha permitido y este es el ejemplo también de Agris, porque realmente pues 47 años es mucho. Es mucho porque realmente se ve todo un trabajo organizado, coordinado, y pues ciertamente este, el apoyo de FAO es importante en estas iniciativas para poder continuar fortaleciéndola. Agris es una red global que ha pasado por diversas etapas y pues obviamente este con el apoyo de FAO, ha sabido liderar con profesionalismo la gestión de la información a nivel mundial. Y pues en estos últimos años, Agris ha revolucionado asombrosamente. Y como lo dice el lema de la conferencia, no vamos a vencer el hambre si no compartimos el conocimiento. Y para darle vida a este lema, tenemos que buscar estrategias para integrar a otros países y estrategias este, que permitan que realmente podamos este, vencer esas barreras, quizás del idioma, quizás dificultades tecnológicas que podamos tener, incluso el desconocimiento de este tipo de iniciativas, porque esto nos plantea retos en el sentido que tenemos que promover este tipo de iniciativas a nivel de nuestros países. Y a nivel de nuestros países, para que realmente la producción científica de nuestros países esté visible al mundo. Y Agri nos da este espacio, este espacio que a mí me parece que es muy importante. Algo también este, este, que yo lo veo como un reto principal es que tenemos que conocer más de Agri y lograr que el conocimiento generado en nuestros países sea compartido y visible al mundo para el desarrollo de la investigación agrícola. ¿Qué significa esto? Este, Centroamérica también estamos, tenemos una iniciativa bien interesante con tres países, El Salvador, Honduras y Nicaragua. Tenemos un portal de, de las revistas científicas. Y esto también es otro espacio que tenemos que aprovechar para poder compartirlo y que Agri también sea ese sistema que nos ayude a promover lo que a nivel de Centroamérica estamos haciendo. Porque ciertamente este, Centroamérica está este, generando información está publicando, pero este, necesitamos esos espacios de visibilidad. Y principalmente necesitamos esos espacios este, de colaboración con otros países. De manera que la producción este, que se está generando a nivel de nuestra región pueda ser compartida. ¿verdad? Y pueda ser compartida qué mejor espacio que el sistema Agris 
para compartir estas iniciativas. Y pues yo quisiera este, también comentarles que pues a nivel de, de nuestro país tenemos este, una, una serie de instituciones, tenemos un sistema de bibliotecas universitarias que también está trabajando este, en este fortalecimiento de los repositorios nacionales, pero también uno de los retos yo creo que también que nos debe plantear esta, esta conferencia anual de AGRIS es cómo fortalecer las redes a nivel de, de cada uno de los países, pero también las redes a nivel de las regiones. Yo creo que es muy importante, tenemos una plataforma CIDAL donde realmente se ha hecho un trabajo extraordinario y yo creo que este es una oportunidad para poder visibilizar lo que a nivel de Centroamérica tenemos en este sistema. Y pues finalmente yo quisiera expresar mi compromiso y el de mi institución, la Universidad Nacional Agraria de Nicaragua, para continuar este, siendo parte de este sistema. Y además también poder compartir este, la información que nosotros generamos y promover este sistema, no solamente en Nicaragua, sino también en todos los países este, de Centroamérica y también de Latinoamérica, porque ciertamente tenemos contactos a nivel de todos estos países y realmente necesitamos integrarlo a este sistema internacional para la ciencia y la tecnología agrícola de Aries. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Ruth. Um, the next speaker um, is Viorica Lupu. Uh, Viorica, is, um, Ruth, please stay with the webcam on. Thank you. Um, Viorica is going to speak in English, so we don't have to worry about interpretation. Correct, Viorica, you will speak in English. Yes. Okay. Over to you, Viorica. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Yima, for introducing me. I am glad to, to share with you our experience and uh, agris relevance on agricultural community from the Republic of Moldova. Since uh, 2004 year, uh, the Republican Scientific um, Agricultural Library of the State Agrarian University of Moldova has been uh, functioning uh, as the official national agri center. And in uh, 2020, the library was nominated as the Agris National Hub in the Republic of Moldova. Uh, since that period, uh, the library contributed uh, to Agris uh, with uh, about uh, 5,000 um, re records, submitting bibliographic records of journal articles, conference papers, dissertation, and other content types. There are many benefits of the library participation in Agris. Uh, Agris uh, offers uh, a big opportunity to agricultural institution from the Republic of Moldova to be part um, of uh, advantages and uh, dynamic international um, network, and uh, also to contribute to the promotion and uh, Moldavian scientific research globally. Thus, the uh, Republic of Moldova benefits uh, from an open and free service having the possibility to make uh, its scientific results to be discovered through algorithms without costs, other barriers and restrictions. Uh, AGRIS also opens uh, agricultural science and research from the Republic of Moldova to a wider audience and uh, contributes uh, to the easier discovery of publication to increase the visibility of global research and the citation of uh, Moldavian uh, offers. Uh, so Moldavian offers uh, can um, easier communicate uh, with uh, other um, researchers from uh, other countries. AGRIS uh, has a, a comprehensive collection of documents uh, which satisfy uh, users' information and research needs. Uh, AGRIS improves uh, circulation um, of um, access to and transfer of scientific knowledge, thus contributing to the evaluation of uh, agriculture, the formulation of agricultural policies, the development of appropriate strategies for development of the agricultural and rural sectors. Uh, at the same time, um, Moldovan farmers uh, having, having access to information and data uh, can know the challenges uh, faced by farmers in other countries and how to identify solution uh, to the specific um, uh, issue. 
Je në the last years Republic of Moldova had the privilege of collaborating more actively with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and um, organized a lot of activities dedicated to agris. Some of them um, information and awareness raising activities for the agricultural community of the Republic of Moldova on the value and importance of the agris. Uh, two editions of the round table, how can you work together to integrate national agricultural information in the global information space? Uh, it was organized um, uh, a campaign, increase the visibility of your research through AGRIS, uh, which aimed to increase the collection and integration of scientific works uh, of researchers from the Republic of Moldova in the international um, AGRIS uh, system. Um, the AGRIS directory was launched on the library website to promote the library's activities within the AGRIS uh, systems. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, in the future to extend um, um, our collaboration with our regarding to the um, data agricultural, um, agricultural uh, data sets. Um, and um, we are uh, proud to be part of the AGRIS community because it offers many benefits, facilities, and um, it is an opportunity for us uh, of learning from each other how to do better, uh, to be open uh, to this new experience and uh, act together to do good things uh, despite uh, the, the difficulties. Thank you.